October 18, 1983, a couple gathering wild mushrooms discovered two partially buried human skulls alongside an oak tree close to an abandoned farmhouse in rural Lake Village, Indiana, off US-41. After immediately reporting their discovery to authorities, investigators found four murder victims at the location. It was determined that each victim had been deceased for several months. All four were bound, stabbed, and had their trousers and underwear pulled down around their ankles. The victims were almost immediately linked to Larry Eiler, a serial killer known as the Highway or Interstate Killer. It was believed that several weeks or months had actually elapsed between each of their deaths. Within a couple months, two of the victims had been identified via dental records as Michael Bauer and John Bartlett. The two remaining victims became known as Brad Doe, Newton County, 1983, and Adam Doe, Newton County, 1983. Eiler would eventually confess to all four murders in a statement posthumously released by his attorney, Kathleen Zellner, following his death due to AIDS-related complications in March 1994 while on death row. His posthumous confession specifically states the two victims unidentified at the time of his death found at this abandoned farmhouse were the third and fourth victims he had murdered at this location. According to his confession, Adam Doe was a hitchhiker who had agreed to perform a sexual act for $75. Brad Doe was an individual whom Eiler claimed to have been introduced to by his alleged accomplice, Robert Little, at his Terre Haute, Indiana home, but he was unaware of either of their actual identities. In addition, he is known to have disposed of any forms of identification that he would find in his victim's possession. Adam was a black male believed to be between the ages of 15 and 18 or possibly early 20s and had received several dental fillings during his lifetime. The clothing he wore included a distinctive red and black belt inscribed with the word devil multiple times with the buckle containing the word jeans. A pair of jeans and pajama bottoms were also found on his remains along with a pair of boots. The boots were made in the Hush Puppies design and had metal buckles to fasten them on each side. Eiler specifically stated that this murder had been committed in July 1983 and confirmed investigators' suspicions that the victim had been a hitchhiker whom he had lured into his vehicle near Indiana State Road 63 in Terre Haute, Indiana. In his formal confession, Eiler stated that in early or mid-July 1983, following several heated arguments with his boyfriend, John Dobrovolskis, Eiler had driven toward Terre Haute. While traveling on State Road 63, he had encountered a hitchhiker whom he confirmed to be Adam Doe and who he described as being aged in his late teens or early 20s. According to Eiler, he offered this victim $75 to allow Eiler to bind and perform an act upon him to which the victim contemplated before agreeing. Eiler had given his victim vodka and a sedative and then drove him to the abandoned farmhouse and performed his brutal act. The fourth and final victim was a white male believed to be between 17 and 23 years old. This victim had also received several dental fillings in life and in the years prior to his murder had severely fractured his nose and left ankle. He had two homemade tattoos on his right forearm, both of which were moderately preserved and recognizable. One of these tattoos depicted either a crudely inscribed Chinese character or a cross with two circular marks. The other was a rectangular or possibly U-shaped marking containing one circular mark. The crude nature of these tattoos indicates that he may have spent time in jail, prison, or a juvenile detention center in life. Eiler specifically stated this murder had been committed in either mid or late May 1983. In late 2019, authorities reached out to the DNA Doe Project for assistance with the case. DNA extract was obtained for human identification, and in January of 2021, the DNA was sent to Hudson Alpha Discovery for whole genome sequencing. In March of 2021, bioinformatics work was performed, and a file was produced suitable for upload to genealogical databases. On April 2, 2021, the file was uploaded to GEDmatch. The top match was a close relative, which led to the identification of Brad Doe. 
In April 2021, nearly 40 years after the remains were found, Brad Doe was formally identified as a 19-year-old Kentucky native named John Ingram Brandenburg Jr., who had disappeared from Chicago in 1983. He was last seen by his family, leaving their home to visit a friend. His loved ones called him Johnny, and he was born February 14, 1964. He was the son of Cleta Louise Brandenburg of Grays, Kentucky, and the late John Ingram Brandenburg, and had several siblings. In Eiler's posthumous confession to Brandenburg's murder, he stated that following a weekend of continual arguing with his lover, he had driven from his lover's home in Greenview, Illinois, to Robert Little's Terre Haute residence, where he first encountered his victim. According to Eiler, Little confided to him he had picked this guy up at a location he did not divulge. He was unsure whether Brandenburg and Little had been previously acquainted, although he did observe the two had seemed sort of familiar with each other. Shortly thereafter, Little allegedly persuaded this individual to participate in a sexual act at the abandoned farmhouse where Eiler had earlier murdered Bartlett and Bauer upon the promise of being paid $100. According to Eiler, as the trio drove to this location, Little informed this individual were looking for something really far out. At this location, the victim was blindfolded and restrained before Little allegedly took several photographs as Eiler removed or adjusted several items of his clothing. According to Eiler, he had to struggle to remove Brandenburg's clothing as he seemed to know something was wrong prior to stabbing him to death. He said he didn't know as much about Brad Doe as he did Adam Doe. He remembered vivid details about each victim, but not always their names. He said he told his victim to make peace with God, waited a few minutes, and then killed them. The investigation to determine the identity of the sole remaining unidentified individual is still ongoing. Dental records belonging to this decedent are in the possession of investigators, and his DNA is stored within national DNA databases. In July 2020, the DNA Doe Project announced renewed genetic testing efforts to identify Adam Doe. The same website announced their efforts to identify Brad in January 2021, three months before his identification. Before his death in 1994, Eiler confessed to over 20 killings of teenage boys and young men between 1982 and 1984 in the Midwestern states while struggling with his homosexuality. Eiler was on death row for the 1984 murder of 15-year-old Danny Bridges at the time of his death. To this day, Adam Doe remains unidentified. On December 26, 1978, authorities uncovered human skeletal remains in the crawl space of a house in Norwood Park, Illinois, a small community northwest of Chicago. The house belonged to notorious serial killer John Wayne Gacy. The remains were among 26 sets that were found in the crawl space under Gacy's home. Three other victims were found buried on his property, and another four people, whom Gacy admitted killing, were found in waterways south of Chicago. Of Gacy's 33 victims, there were eight that remained unidentified for many years. Of those eight was one victim who was simply labeled victim number five because they were the fifth remains to be unearthed. Forensic anthropologists determined that victim number five was a white male between 22 and 32 years old. The date of death was most likely between December 1976 and March 15, 1977, based on the location of the remains between two other victims who have since been identified. In 2011, the Sheriff's Office exhumed the remains of the eight unidentified victims who had been buried without police knowing who they were. Police were looking for relatives to submit DNA, and so they called on anyone who had a male relative disappear in the Chicago area in the 1970s when Gacy was active. Within weeks, the sheriff's office announced that it had identified one set of remains as those of William Bundy, a 19-year-old construction worker. In 2017, a second set was identified as those of 16-year-old Jimmy Hakinson, who disappeared after he called his mother in Minnesota and told her that he was in Chicago. Then in 2019, investigative genetic genealogy was put into place to help identify the remaining unidentified six victims. 
Victim number five was ultimately selected as a promising first case. An attached molar was submitted to Astria Forensics in Santa Cruz, California for DNA extraction. The sample was then delivered to Hudson Alpha Discovery in Huntsville, Alabama for whole genome sequencing. Once sequencing was completed, the DNA file was uploaded to GEDmatch where the talented genetic genealogists were able to identify a potential family of the victim within eight hours. They compared his DNA profile to those on two genealogy websites to find possible relatives and got a hit tied to a second cousin, which led them to a set of shared great-grandparents born in the 19th century. Researchers then worked from those great-grandparents, eliminating descendants who were alive or whose death they could account for. Ultimately, they zeroed in on a young male. That led them to the victim's mother and half-brother, who both provided their DNA for comparison. On October 25, 2021, about 45 years after his murder, it was announced the remains of victim number five belonged to Francis Wayne Alexander. Little is known about him, but it is known that he was born in North Carolina, moved to New York where he married, and then moved to Chicago in 1975 where he was soon divorced. Police were able to get a general sense of when he was killed because they knew when the victim who was buried on top of him went missing. Moreover, the fact that the trench in which his body was discovered was dug by Gacy employee and victim Gregory Godsick shortly after the commencement of Godsick's employment at Gacy's contracting firm on or about November 22, 1976, and before Godsick's own murder on December 12, 1976, indicates Alexander's death most likely occurred between November 1976 and March 15, 1977. He would have been 21 or 22 at the time of his death. The last known record of his life were traffic tickets he received, the last one in January 1976. How he crossed paths with one of the most notorious serial killers in American history is a mystery. As authorities say, all they know is that he lived in an area that was frequented by Gacy and where other victims had previously lived. Gacy lured some victims to his house by promising to hire them for construction jobs, but Alexander worked in bars and clubs. His family never filed a missing persons report, and when they lost touch, they figured he'd started a new life and didn't want to be in contact. Still, they loved him, and although news of his murder saddened them, they were relieved to finally know what happened and where he was. He is survived by his mother and four half-siblings. As a bonus, the submission of DNA from people who suspected Gacy might have killed their loved ones has helped police solve at least 11 cold cases of homicides that had nothing to do with Gacy. It has also helped families find loved ones who, while missing, were alive, including a man in Oregon who had no idea his family was looking for him. As of today, this leaves five remaining unidentified victims of Gacy. The DNA Doe Project is nonprofit that consists of volunteers and is operated by donations to identify Jane and John Doe's using forensic genealogy. They sell merch on their website and take donations as well if you would like to check it out to support the cause.